We've embarked on a journey to take all these cheap, tiny Raspberry Pi computers and combine their resources into a more powerful cluster computer. And in part one of this series, we set up the software to make this project work and made a copy of that software to be installed on each computer. So in part two of this series, we're going to configure each Pi in the cluster to talk to each other and then run a password cracking program using their combined powers. If you get any value from these videos and would like to give some value back, please consider supporting my channel at patreon.com slash tinkernut. We left off last time by creating an image file from the SD card that has our pre-configured software on it. The next step is to copy that image file to the other SD cards for each computer in your cluster. Then insert these SD cards into each of the Pi's, connect them all to the same switch or router, and then power them on. Assuming that each Pi has already auto-logged in, we should be able to do all of our configuration from Pi number one. And the first thing that we need to do is figure out the IP addresses for each of the Raspberry Pis. This is how they're going to communicate with each other. So if you don't know them already, you can install Nmap to scan for them on the network. To get this Pi's IP address, just use ifconfig. Then use this Nmap command to scan for the other Raspberry Pis on the network and jot down their IP addresses. The next step is to use SSH to log into each of the Pi's individually and launch Raspy Config to change their network names to the next sequential name until you've renamed all the Pi's in your cluster. In my case I have four Pi's so I would have Pi 02, Pi 03, and then Pi 04. Once that's done, create a new file called a machine file and put each Pi's IP address in it so that the MPI software can read them. And you can run this command to test to make sure everything's working. And apparently it's not. As you can note by this error, it's saying that we don't have the access rights to run anything on the other Raspberry Pi's. And the best way to fix this error is to create and swap authentication keys with each of the Pi's. So stay with me. This might get complicated. First, on this Pi, generate a new key and save it to the default .ssh folder with no password. Then jump into that .ssh directory and copy the idrsa file to a new file called pi01 just to keep things organized. Now you want to ssh into pi number two and do the exact same thing, except rename the idrsa file as pi02. The next step is to copy the Pi01 key file to this computer and add it to the authorized keys list. Okay, now exit out of that connection and SSH into Pi number three and do the exact same thing. Creating a new key, renaming the IDRSA to Pi03, and then copying over the Pi01 key file and adding it to the authorized key list. Now exit out of that connection and let's repeat the same steps for Pi number four. Bear with me, we're almost done. The last step back on Pi number one is to copy all the key files from the other computers and add each of them to the authorized keys list. If you made it this far, you deserve a Tinkernut Award of Awesome Pinus, and you can download that in the video description. All right, now let's run the MPI machine file again, and hopefully you'll see a response like this. All right, now let's try to run a Python file since we have the Python framework installed. If you use wget and point it to this link, you can download a custom Python MD5 password cracker file that I created. Unzip it and then use nano to edit the file and paste in your own MD5 hash that you want to crack. Then copy the whole folder to the same location on each computer so that they can run it as well. Now run MPI with Python to see how quickly it can crack the password. Now obviously this is just a basic example that doesn't require much computing power anyway, but it should provide a platform to create your own cluster computing environment. You can apply the same principle also to larger, more capable computers and create a legitimate supercomputer cluster. What would you run on a supercomputer? Let me know in the comments below. 
Again, here's part one of the series if you missed it, and also be sure to watch last week's comment show. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider donating at patreon.com or subscribing to my YouTube, Google Plus, or Twitter channels. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com, where technology and creativity collide.